When we think of sustainability, we usually think of the big picture. Pollution reduction, recycling, water cleanup, or reducing our carbon footprint. But the small things we need and use every day can also add up to make a massive difference. For example, the unobtrusive metal brackets and fasteners that connect things together add up to a global $95 billion industry that directly employs 128,000 people. If just 5% of the metal in each fastener was reduced while still maintaining its strength, tens of thousands of tons of material are saved. But how can we remove 5% of material efficiently and effectively? By using generative design machine learning techniques to dream up 3D creations humans could have never imagined. I'm Colin Fearing. I'm a 15-year-old inventor, and I'm interested in computers, problem solving, and sustainability. As a self-directed learner, I've independently completed many projects, including developing an augmented reality museum app with photo-scanned artifacts, making educational science and space animations, as well as making videos, photos, renders, and simulations. Generative design is a branch of design that helps us break out of human biases to create new designs from scratch. In the last couple of years, generative design has used artificial intelligence to iteratively produce everything from landscapes, to music, to human faces, all of which have never been seen before. It uses training data and machine learning to create prototype models on its own, while still meeting all design criteria and constraints. Generative design for 3D models allows for rapid prototyping and optimization. A variety of AI brainstormed ideas can be generated to fit the design constraints, while being lighter and sometimes even stronger than their human designed counterparts. My project is to use generative design to prototype an optimized version of this bulky railing bracket in order to reduce metal usage while maintaining the part's strength and durability. Although this is a commercial part, my main focus is on the optimization of metal parts in industrial machinery. I will work through my planned design process on the railing bracket before expanding to parts which require more design iterations and testing. I'm starting small, but I've already done a prototype. I've taken the railing holder and used the forces and screw locations as constraints to minimize materials, maximize strength, and ensure the final result is reasonable to mass produce. Then, I 3D printed both the human and generative design versions of the model. This version failed, but that's part of the design process. And this prototype used 54% less material than the original bracket, while still maintaining the bracket's strength, according to my stress simulations. However, there are some challenges with generative design. It's very new, so there's not as many resources and examples. It's still in research. Some of the generated models are really difficult to predict. Not every design can be optimized and the designs generated may have unintended results. But sometimes, those unintended results can produce amazing, brand new designs that aren't the first solution for humans. Now that manufacturing technologies allow for more complex shapes, it's a perfect time to reassess our old obsession with straight lines and simple curves. And if the process works for one, it could work for millions. The smallest of changes can have a huge impact. This is because many materials are required to produce metal, so every tiny bit saved in the metal making process is magnified immensely in terms of the total amount saved. Instead of focusing on what is producing pollution and working up the chain, making a slightly more efficient product that factories spend less energy producing is far more efficient and only requires the changing of one relatively small step. Redesigning a pre-existing product means that consumers don't need to change their behavior, so people will contribute to sustainability without even knowing it. Because it's so new, big companies are starting to use it to improve important components like airplane or car parts. But it won't just be the big things that need to be improved. I'm focusing on optimizations in small parts, because it's an unexplored niche that has a huge potential. When we think of sustainability, we think of the obvious things. But it's the small and often ignored parts that have the greatest impact on the world, and the future of sustainability.